Hi guys, in the previous lecture we have seen how to find the Fourier series of any kind of waveform. Also we have seen the types of load. There are two types of load. The first one is voltage stiff type of load and second is the current stiff type of load. So R and RE load are considered to be the voltage stiff type of load and remaining in which you have inductor present in the load that is considered to be current stiff type of load. Now in this lecture we will start rectifier and we will see what is rectifier and its classification okay. So what do you mean by rectifier? Rectifier is the power electronic circuit which converts AC to DC any AC signal into DC signal okay that is known as rectifier. So I divided rectifier in three categories first is the uncontrolled rectifier second is the fully controlled rectifier and third one is the semi-controlled rectifier in uncontrolled rectifier basically we are using power diode okay and we know that diode is the uncontrolled switch so we are using diode circuit to convert ac to dc form like in uncontrolled rectifier we are getting output voltage that is constant means V0 will not change. We cannot control the magnitude of output voltage. The output voltage is constant. While in fully controlled rectifier, we use thyristor. So depending upon the firing angle, we can vary the output DC voltage. So it is variable. We are giving input that is equal to Vm sin omega t that is fixed. Okay. And we are getting output that is in variable form and the output voltage depends upon the firing angle of thyristor. I will tell you what is firing angle of thyristor later on. For now what you understand in fully controlled rectifier we are giving fixed AC supply and we are getting output in form of DC that is variable in nature means we can vary the output voltage. The third category is semi converter which is the combination of diode and thyristor okay and this in this case also we are getting variable DC output that is depending upon the firing angle of this thyristor. So in all the three categories what we are using? We are using diode and rectifier that is the power electronic devices and we know that power electronic devices have very less loss practically ideally we are taking as a zero loss. So in power electronic circuit the losses present in the circuit is zero so we can say that in all the power electronic devices we will take ideal PE circuit and in which we take P in input power is equal to output power okay and we know that input power is AC in the rectifier the input power is AC so we can take VS VS is the input RMS voltage IS is the input RMS current and cos phi cos phi is the input power factor that must be equal to output power okay now the output power depends on the type of load like in previous lecture i have explained you two types of load voltage steep type of load and current steep type of load so if voltage steep type of load is considered then output power is equal to rms voltage square by r or i rms square into r for r load and for re load i rms square into r plus e into i average so output power will vary upon which type of load we are taking across the output got it now there is another type of classification in rectifier that is on the basis of pulse number what do you mean by pulse number we are give, giving input voltage that is ac okay the ac will be sinusoidal like this okay and we are getting output voltage suppose from 0 to pi like this and pi to 2 pi we are not getting output voltage means in one cycle it is giving only one pulse so this type of converter is known as one pulse converter in one cycle it is giving only one pulse from 0 to pi similarly two there are two pulse converter in the rectifier circuit in which we are getting two pulse in one cycle so it is two pulse converter now if i will talk about the harmonic analysis if i will make this over here series of this converter one pulse converter and two pulse converter then harmonic content in one pulse converter will be more than two pulse converter as the number of pulse when you increase the harmonic content will decrease i already derived an expression of form factor and ripple factor in lecture number one for dc harmonic analysis okay so if i will do the dc harmonic analysis of this one pulse converter then the harmonic content will be more than the two pulse converter okay similarly there are three pulse converter available this is three pulse converter 
in one cycle it is giving three pulse you can see this is 2 pi so in one cycle it is giving three pulse that's why it is known as three pulse converter generally this type of converter is three phase half wave okay this is single phase full wave and this is single phase half wave okay we will see these all things in detail in the next lecture now there is also one more type of converter that is the six pulse converter this is known as six pulse converter okay in six pulse converter in in one cycle we are getting six pulse so example of the output waveform of this converter is found in three phase full wave converter okay so as the number of pulse will increase then ripple ripple is change in output voltage like in one pulse converter like in one pulse converter we are giving uh, we are having ripple this much okay in two pulse converter also we have a ripple a voltage ripple is from zero to maximum that is vm okay but in three pulse converter see in three pulse converter the ripple voltage the ripple in voltage decreases then the single pulse converter and two pulse converter so as the ripple in output voltage decreases the harmonic content will decrease and dc component in that waveform will increase and overall the voltage ripple factor will get reduced similarly in six pulse converter the ripple in output voltage is less got it so these are the classification of rectifier on the basis of pulse number now before moving to the rectifier module i would like to ask you to find the rms value of these kind of rectangular function like suppose the rectangular function is given like this the current waveform is given like this from 0 to pi it is i naught and pi to 2 pi it is 0 so how to find the rms value of this kind of function see what is the rms value rms value is nothing but root mean square what do you mean by this means you should square the waveform okay then take the average of this waveform that is the mean and take the under root that will give you the rms value of that function so if i will square this waveform means if i will square this waveform then what i will get i will get same waveform like this from 0 to pi it will be like this and from pi to 2 pi it is 0 and the magnitude the maximum current i will be having that is i naught square if i will square this waveform so what i am doing i am squaring the waveform then i am taking the average of this waveform so already i squared this waveform okay and for finding the average of this waveform what i will do i will find the area so area will be i naught square into pi and i will divide by time period okay so if i will divide by time period time period is 2 pi and I, if i will take the under root of this then i will get rms value so rms value will be i naught under root pi upon 2 pi so what is the shortcut method the shortcut method is suppose you are getting any rectangular function then for finding the rms value what you have to do you have to just uh, see the maximum current that is i naught and take under root of conduction angle for what period you are getting output current so for pi period you are getting output parent so uh, take the conduction angle in the numerator and total time period in the denominator that will give you the rms value of this waveform no need to integrate no need to square only you have to see the maximum value that is i naught and take under root of this got it so in this way you can find the rms value of any rectangular function suppose i will ask you what is the average value of this function then it is easy average value will be area under this time period so area will be i naught into pi and time period is 2 pi so average value will be this much i naught into how for how much uh, it is conducting that is pi upon total time period 2 pi okay and for rms value what you have to do you have to take i naught under root of conduction angle by total time period got it in the same way suppose i will ask you what is the rms value of this function so let us find first the average value so average value you will get zero because area the positive area is equal to the negative area so average will be zero but you will get rms voltage so for rms voltage what you have to do i told you square the waveform 
So if I will square the waveform of uh, this rectangular pulse, then I will get from uh, 60 to 180, that is I naught square. The maximum value will change, that is I naught square if I will square with the, this waveform. And again from 240 to 360, I will get like this this is i naught square because if i will square the minus i naught then i will get plus i naught square so it will move to the first quadrant so after squaring the waveform i will get like this okay now here you can see that the time period had changed now to find the uh, rms value what you have to do you have to square the waveform then take the area under that waveform and divided by time period and take the under root so take under root I have already squared the waveform. Now I find the area of this waveform. The area of this waveform will be I naught square into this area. I naught square into 120 degree upon time period. Upon time period, what will be the time period of this? See here the time period is 360 degree, but here the time period has changed. It will be 180 degree. So the time period will be 180 degrees. Finally, RMS value will come out to be I naught under root of conduction angle that is 120 degree by 180 degree got it in this way you can find the rms value of any rectangular function why i am telling you this because this i will use while finding the conduction angle of thyristor rms value of thyristor rms value of diode and uh, and circuit turn of time so this concept will be used there that's why I explained you how to find the RMS value. Only what you have to do, you have to square this waveform. So after squaring, take the average of that waveform and then take the under root that will give you the RMS value. Got it? So that's all about this lecture. In the next lecture, we will start the rectifier. So I created the rectifier module according to the gate syllabus. So I divided the rectifier into two categories. First one is the single phase and second one is the three phase in single phase again it is classified in two categories half wave and full wave and in half wave two types are there that is uncontrolled and controlled in uncontrolled we use diode and in control we will use thyristor okay and we will see the output voltage output current conduction angle output power of any kind of load like r load l load rl load rl with free wheeling diode and re load same load can be repeated for control converter that is R L R L R L with free wheeling diode and R E load. Okay. Now in full wave, it is divided into three categories. First one is the uncontrolled, then controlled and semi-controlled. So in uncontrolled, we will use diode. Controlled, we will use thyristor. Okay. And in semi-controlled, we will use diode plus thyristor so semi controlled is divided in three categories first one is the symmetrical second is the asymmetrical and third one is the full converter plus free wheeling diode we will see these three semi controlled circuit and the load we will take that is r load rl load re load and rle type of load similarly in three phase we divide into types that is half wave and full wave in half wave we will see uncontrolled and controlled and in full wave we will see only controlled that is the fully thyristor breeze okay so if you guys understood the concept then please like this video for new updates you can subscribe to this channel and for doubt solving you can join our facebook group thanks for watching this video